All right, welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at Lake Mead and what's been going on there the last few years with the drought. We're headed down to Kingman Wash right now. Let's pull up a map. Here you're going to see Las Vegas, and just to the east of it is Lake Mead. So we actually headed across the Hoover Dam, which is right here, into Arizona, and I'm going down the Kingman Wash to check out this cove right here. We'll take a quick look at the water supply report for Lake Mead. As of July 2022, we're at 1,042.79 feet, and that is showing 27% full. So we're going to go around Lake Mead and try and compare some old photos with some current day ones so you can see how much it's changed. We're going to start here in Kingman Wash in the current day and keep an eye on the sandbar sticking out here. completely underwater. This picture is from 2019. You'll notice the RV is camped right on the water side. Here we go back to 2022 and look at all that land sticking out now. You'll see that's about where the water line was in the old photo. We're going to pan over to the right in the same cove. Here's 2019 again. You'll see that RV back there on the water. And here we're going to roll it back to the current day. And now look at those two cars. They are now on the water line. Keep an eye on them for your perspective in this one. Completely underwater. It's crazy how much it's changed in just a few years down here. I'm gonna drive down to the new water line now. You can tell it's pretty windy today. And there's the uh, folks from the photo that are down at the water line. And this is why I suggest if you're not familiar with the terrain or the weather here, just stay off Lake Mead when it's like this. It's really not enjoyable and it's dangerous too. Here we are coming down to the water now. And sorry for the shakiness, it's just so windy. But I want to get a shot here of what we call the bathtub ring. That's the high water level. You can see it in the left of the photo, the white looking rock. We'll pan over here. You can see kind of the staircase that the water has created from lapping on the shore. I'll pan over here and you can see how low I am below that high water mark. And here's another shot of the staircase where the water laps it and then recedes and laps it and recedes and it forms this odd looking stair structure here. And the reason I'm showing this bay, because this used to be one of my favorite areas here to come and hang out. It was like an alpine lake. And what we're going to do here is line up another old photo. So I'm going to pause it and we're going to put up the year here. And then we're going to wipe the photo and you're going to be able to see what this used to look like a few years ago. Look at that. You can even see a little duck down there in the pond. We'll put an arrow up here where that water level is. And look at that, it's just completely empty. And we'll wipe it again back the other way. We'll leave the arrow up there so you can see where the water line is. A few years, that's all it took. And here we are in the present day. We're gonna continue on here. So this is pretty sad to see because it just does not look the same at all. I'm gonna head down to that beach area that wasn't exposed before, check it out. So here we are down at that beach and you can get a perspective on the walls here, the canyon. They really just start dropping off once the water level recedes. And it is basically just like a huge empty canyon here before they filled it with water. Here's a shot overlooking the whole wash. Gonna get a look at that bathtub ring in the distance. You can see how it goes around the whole lake there. And we're just about to take off, but oh, look at this. Here come the town folk coming down to cool off. Must have got too hot up there in the hills. And they're gonna go bug these people for snacks too. Smart little fellas. We're heading back into Lake Mead now through the Boulder City entrance. Let's pull up a map. 
So we came up the wash here. We headed back over the dam into Nevada. And now we're coming down into the park here. Right here in this area is Hemingway Harbor. And this is one of the main boat launch ramps that's still open. So it does get busy, especially around holiday weekends. But surprisingly, I heard there wasn't much traffic there 4th of July. So we're gonna head over here to Boulder Beach. There's some nice picnic areas here that get used when it's cooled off. It's a little hot now for them, but you can see here's one off to the right, some benches and gazebos, and there's another covered one off to the left here. Nice place to have a picnic or barbecue. Unfortunately, the water level has receded so much, it's nowhere close to this area anymore. And here's where you turn off to get to the other beaches. There's a personal watercraft beach down there. You can launch a jet ski or a special events beach if you want to go with your pets. But we're just going to head straight down to the swim beach and see what's going on. And here we are at the swim beach. It looks like they're doing some grading, so there's really no one on this side. There's a couple folks over there on the special events beach braving the wind today. And off in the distance there, you'll see the Boulder Islands. Those keep getting more and more exposed as the water level drops. They used to just look like little mounds. They actually just a few days ago recovered the body of a young lady, unfortunately, who was jet skiing a couple weeks back and was reported missing. And she just turned up there. They recovered her on Boulder Island. Sad story there. But this is a lake. It's crazy out here when the weather turns. I don't know what it is about it. We're going to pan around here. You can see that bathtub ring way up there on the top. And sorry again about the focus issues. So it is actually closed here. That's why no one's down here and they're doing some grading work, which is good to see. I'm guessing because the water level has receded so much, they need to grade it out. And this is why they call it Boulder Beach right here. This is literally what the beach looks like, and it's really not enjoyable to walk on at all. It's not a beach like you would think. So good to see him doing some work down here. Uh, there's a lot of broken glass and fishing trash washed up, so this place is like in a state of constant neglect, it seems like. We're gonna head on out of here, but before we go, I noticed this on here, Lake Mead Lodge. They just demolished this. It was sitting here vacant for a long time, boarded up. Here's what it looked like before they demolished it. And I was able to line up a photo from the Lake Mead archives from 1951 on the wing here. And there's a photo of the original lodge. And then I found some other photos there also. There was one of guests overlooking the balcony from January 1942. And you can see how close the water level was back then to the resort. If you happen to know what's going on with this place, let us know down in the comments because it looked like a neat place. And there was another lawn tramp here. This one is also closed. As you can see, it was a little inlet and we actually uh, used to go launch our kayak here even after the boat launch was closed because you could still walk the kayak down and get out. But now, unfortunately, what has happened, the water level is so low that this little inlet access point here has also dried up. We'll continue up along Lakeshore here. And I'll show you another ramp here, Las Vegas Bay. This is also another large recreation area. There's a big campground here, still operational and it's still nice back here. And you can get a site overlooking the bluff here. And uh, there's still water in this little bay area here, but it is drying up also. Now the boat launch over here is completely dried up and has been for quite a while. I don't remember this ever being open and there's concrete barriers here and everything. And there's a ranger station at the entrance here also, but that's shut down because none of this is getting any business. So this whole area kind of dried up. Sad to see also because this is another fun air recreation area right here near uh, this entrance booth, but now doesn't really get much use. So we'll be heading up North Shore Road here towards Colville Bay next. You're going to see the back of Lake Las Vegas and the dam there off in the distance on the hill. Lake Las Vegas here, it's not labeled for some reason, 
but a lot of people think this is fed from Lake Mead. It is, but in an indirect way. As you can see from this map, all the Las Vegas area stormwater and runoff and from the Rainbow Gardens area all goes down into the Las Vegas wash here and continues on its way. And that is also supplemented with wastewater that's treated from the city water and sewer water. It's treated and dumped into the wash too with that urban runoff and it all comes down to form Lake Las Vegas. So this is actually a lake formed with runoff and treated wastewater. At that point, it's dammed up and slowly released down the Las Vegas wash where it continues off past the Las Vegas Bay I showed you on the map and out into Lake Mead here. Now you'll also notice here right in the flow of the uh, wash water is the intake. So this intake pipe is drawing water in and it is actually going underneath Lake Las Vegas and supplying the city area with water. So this is kind of just like one big loop here. It's getting intake here into the city and then the city's using it and they try and reclaim as much as they can down uh, the storm drains and down your uh, city drains and it gets treated at the wastewater plant and released back into the wash and then comes back out into Lake Mead. So this is helping kind of mitigate some of the water loss here. It's not just going in the city and all being, uh, you know, evaporated or dumped in the streets. A lot of it's actually being reclaimed going back into the dammed up Lake Las Vegas and then back into the lake. Here's a system of intake pipes here supplying the city water. As you can see, it says in 2015, we're at 1,080 feet above sea level. And as of July, 2022, during this video, we're at 1,042 feet. So the first intake was constructed at 1,050 feet. So we're already below that one, as you can tell from the numbers from this month. The second intake built later was at 1,000 feet. So that one is still underwater. And the third most recent one, which was just done a few years ago, is at 860 feet above sea level. Here's a photo of the first intake right here. You can see it's exposed now. This is the one that was at 1,050 feet. So with the water level today at 1,042 feet, this is unfortunately exposed now and it's not operational. So that is obviously a big part of the issue with the water level getting lower. These intakes aren't able to pull in the water that we need for the city. The other issue is down here at Hoover Dam where you get uh, what they call a dead pull situation. It's when the Hoover Dam intakes pictured here get too low to produce power. I got a diagram here of the Hoover Dam power pool and as you can see our current water level 1042 feet it's already dropped below the old minimum power pool level. Thankfully, like the intake system, there's a newer one that's lower at 950 feet. At this point, we're only about 100 more feet from hitting that new minimum power pool level though. And this is a problem that they're facing upstream a little bit at Lake Powell with the Glen Canyon Dam. Also, try not to lose so much water that it's gonna become a dead pool situation. We're approaching Colville Bay now on the north end of the lake, and this used to be a real popular boat launch behind Hemingway Harbor, but not anymore because as you can see, it's now a parking lot because the boat launch just goes down in the dirt. And the marina keeps getting pushed further and further out into the water. So you can see the folks down here have no capability to get the boat out of the water here. They have to walk that long catwalk to get to their boat slip and they would have to take the boat out at Hemingway Harbor, I'm guessing, or Echo Bay if they can get it out there. And you'll notice the light poles up on the hill there is where the parking lot used to be. There's a good shot of how dried out it is now here down at Colville Bay. Now we're going to go just east of that and back down Colville Wash to the water. This used to be a fun trail to go down when you didn't have much time and you just wanted to take the dogs down swimming, but I have a feeling the water's gonna be a lot farther back now. And you can see this mound here. Look at the high water level mark. It's amazing how high up that is. So here we are coming down Colville Wash and I can already tell myself this is a lot different because this is about where we used to park. And you're going to notice we're going to line up the photo from the intro here again. So 
Now we're going to roll back again to 2019. And you can see the water level was right there. You really couldn't go any farther here back then. And now you can definitely continue a lot farther back at this point. We stopped here though because the sand gets pretty deep and it's that real fine poof dirt about a foot down before you hit anything solid. You can tell all this was underwater recently and there's a lot of washed up boat and dock trash. I wouldn't recommend going past this point unless you have lockers or some recovery capabilities. So, what is being done in southern Nevada to help mitigate the effects of this drought? Well for one, everyone is put on strict watering schedules. Every resident is put into a watering group and told how many days a week they're allowed to water, what days they're allowed to water, what times they're allowed to water, and what can happen to you if you don't water at the correct times. And yes, you can get fined, because the city has also set up a special water patrol task force. Who knows how much money and resources this took, but they do go around and document water waste, and they also encourage neighbors to call in and report neighbors who aren't watering at the correct times or days. Along with this, the governor recently signed a bill that bans non-functional grass in the Las Vegas Valley. You might ask yourself, what is non-functional grass? They define it as grass that no one uses at office parks, street medians, and housing development entrances. Golf courses are exempt from the law, which is odd considering golf courses are consistently the largest offenders of water waste in the valley. This has led to a host of other issues considering the grass ban is retroactive meaning that these communities that are affected by the ban must go and rip up grass that has been there sometimes for years or decades. The HOAs and communities have no choice but to pass the bill on to homeowners who are getting hit with large bills in order to remove their trees and grass to comply with the new ban. An interesting thing about this is if you pull up the numbers here, and these are given in thousands of acre feet, if you look at the forecasted use for 2022 here in southern Nevada, we're forecasted to use 258 acre feet. And then next, if you go to Arizona, they're at 2,140. And finally, California with the forecasted most use, 4,624 acre feet. So it seems like no matter how much uh, people in Nevada or Southern Nevada here were to conserve their water, it's really not going to make all that much difference in these two numbers here if you look at the disparity between all of them. Another piece of this puzzle lies just upstream at Lake Powell, which feeds Lake Mead, where they're facing the same drought situations and trying to avoid a dead pool also at the Glen Canyon Dam. Recently, the Bureau of Reclamation met and convened with environmental groups and conservationists and determined that power from Lake Powell will win out as the west water shortage forces hard decisions. Lake Mead will go lower. In other words, they had determined that Lake Powell's dead pool situation was more dire than preserving Lake Mead's water level at the time being. So are there any long-term solutions to these problems, other than ripping up grass and watering less? Well, one of the most talked about solutions is desalination plants on the coast of California. This would make sense seeing how they use the most water. I've heard it's costly and complex to build these plants, but I'm not sure where their infrastructure money has been going all these years or why they didn't start 10 years ago. Another talked about solution is building a pipeline from the Mississippi River to divert flood water out west to relieve the drought. I like this idea also because it takes what Mother Nature has given us and just moves it to another place where it's needed. Although this would be very time consuming, it's another thing that should have been started a decade ago. A final less talked about solution would be the Glen Canyon Dam removal. I've only really seen this mentioned by Tick Segerbloom here and some of his conservationist groups. I'm not really sure if they've thought out what would happen to the power that's generated there. I have heard it talked about, so I feel it's worth mentioning. So do you guys have any ideas for solutions to this problem? Because it really seems like politicians and developers here aren't concerned at all with the way that they're building. It might be up to us to figure out the solutions here and make something happen. As always, we want to thank you guys for watching the video, and we'll see you next time for more adventures. Take care.